Hey, what's going on, Applause Bootcamp? This is Mike Sneed coming to you. I want to thank everybody for joining us uh, tonight. Uh, right now, I want to thank uh, the town of Selma again uh, for um, for the Legacy Award. I got the Legacy Award on this past Saturday. Like I say, uh, it's an honor to actually receive the award. I don't think I've <coughs> I'm old enough to get be a legacy. I don't uh, know what I've quite done to, to get it, but I'm very honored and I'm very appreciative that they felt uh, that, that they thought enough of me to, to give me the actual award. You know, we have our national convention coming up June 15th through the 17th. You need to buy your tickets. The link is in the actual, actual description. Um, if you go there and purchase your tickets, the tickets are moving. Um, I got one more week, and then I'm going to hit the road and actually start pushing to sell these tickets. So I want uh, to get the tickets first, get first uh, grab at them. And then after that, uh, I'm going to be hitting the road in, uh, in actual March and pushing them. So if you, uh, you want to actually get them, um, here's the link right here. This is the link right here to actually uh, purchase the ticket. Click on that and purchase your ticket. Like I said, I want to have at least, I want to try, my goal is to get 300 people in here. I want to get 300 people in here uh, for the actual conference. We got to, we got to make a move. We got to make a move. And that's, that's going to what we're doing, talking about tonight also. Uh, ice cream. If you want to do the ice cream uh, boot camp, I've put up uh, uh, a couple more modules. I had uh, two modules that was, uh, they haven't gotten uh, uploaded. Those modules are now uploaded. They're completed. Um, everything is in it. I, I have a few more modules that will be coming up later. The two modules in the ice cream boot camp is coming up later. One of them will be wholesaling for somebody who would like to, who's making their own ice cream and they want to wholesale to other ice cream parlors. I'm not actually in the process of doing it now. This will be my second year. I, I, um, I'm actually going to do that one a little later because I haven't worked out all the kinks, uh, finding out some of the stuff as far as labeling. Uh, if you're actually scooping ice cream and actually handing it to people, I don't have to have an actual label on the actual container. I just give you a label, a warning label telling you, hey, uh, this ice cream might have came in contact with nuts or allergens or, or gluten and all that, and you're good. But we have a, a new vendor uh, where they're going to actually – uh, scoop the ice cream and it's going to be like a door dash. So with that, they have to have all the ingredients for each flavor of ice cream that they're uh, uh, serving on their website or for the customers they requested. So I'm going through figuring out how to do that. We got that stuff going. And uh, so once I get all that stuff done, I'm going to be releasing a module on wholesaling on your ice cream. Also, you're going to have the one on the shipping container. Uh, how to actually uh, uh, get the shipping container stuff built out. I have that coming up as soon as uh, as soon as I get my shipping container completed. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll find out tomorrow if everything is clear. Uh, today they were actually closed because of President's Day. Uh, so tomorrow when they open back up, I'll find out if I got that clear. Uh, so talking, uh, we got to get serious. Uh, uh, as African-American, especially African-American men, uh, we have to really get serious about this thing called life. Last, uh, especially this weekend and last couple of weeks, I've just been going around and um, I'm filming. I got to figure the black people out so they can't see the kids' faces and stuff. So I have some videos coming out uh, pretty soon of uh, me going around. I just ask kids, you know, uh, what do you want to do when you grow up? And right now, um, it's not for three things uh, that I repeatedly get with African-American men. Um, it's, it's just three things constantly. They're either going to be a, a professional basketball player or they're a professional athlete, football player, or they're gonna, they want to be a rapper. They're gonna, they want to they wanna be in music. And that's their only choices. And, um, and what I'm telling these guys when I'm talking to them, these young men, uh, I always tell them, uh, you look too smart to be a basketball player. You look too smart to be a football player. Have you ever thought about being an engineer? You look more like an engineer. You, you look more like a medical doctor. 
You look more like a CPA. And um, I'm seeing a light go off in the head. And they'd be like, oh, wow. Then some of them would tell me on the divorce, well, I did engineer one time. <laughs> uh, I said, you like you should be a contractor. You should be a plumber. And, um, and um, you should uh, be an electrician. Uh, and, uh, and, and I'm starting to try to push that narrative into these kids. Because right now, these kids, all, they, all they're putting their hopes in is basketball, football, and rapping. And um, that, that, that falls back onto us as African-American men. Because most of the time, that's all we listen to and look at. So that's all we know. That's all our conversation is, basketball, football, and rapping. So we have to watch we call. We, we, got, we, got to, we got to do better about us because that's the only choices we gave these young, uh, young African-American kids, um, the men. Uh, that that's their only way out. And that's the only thing we come to the community to do, uh, to, uh, to support basketball teams, to support football teams, or put on some type of dancing thing where they're dancing and, and, uh, and uh, entertaining instead of us coming there and, uh, and, uh, and, and bringing stuff that these kids need. We need to start bringing robotics in there. We need to start bringing skilled trades in there and having those type of competitions for these young kids getting them in there because what's happening they're not going to have a way to compete the way this world is coming um you all know that uh i was all excited last week uh, uh I, I jumped in the truck for a few days and and said i, I was going to get me twelve thousand dollars and i was going to go out here and i was going to mike sneed was going to make him a move <laughs> that's, what, that's what i thought i thought for surely twelve thousand would get me what i wanted to get uh, but but unfortunately, uh, the goalposts have been moved. I'm going to show you all something, so you know what your kids are going to be up against uh, going uh, going forward. Um, okay, uh, you all can see this. Let me let me zoom it up. All right. Uh, well, old Mike Sneed, uh, here we go. All right, here we go. Old Mike Sneed thought uh, thought that he was going to jump out there today and get him two two uh, two of these handicapped vans. Um, they had they had um, uh, one of the nursing homes in North Carolina out there in uh, Cherry Point, um, with Cherry Hill out in Goldsboro. They had let's see, uh, how many? One, two, three. They had five. They had five vans out there. Um, they they had there was the high top and had the uh had the handicap uh, lift gates in it. And um, I, I I thought thought for sure I could get one. I thought I was gonna get two of them. And what I was gonna do, I was gonna use one uh, and convert that into uh, another ice cream truck where they can actually sell. And the other one was going to be my delivery ice cream truck. Uh, so I, 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 I thought for sure that I was going to be able to get one. Because just look, uh, last year on, on, on March the 11th, 2022, I bought one, a, 26, a 2006 van for $6,500. So I, I thought $12,000, $13,000 would get it for me. Well, here goes today. <laughs> You can see my bid. I put ten thousand dollars on this one. It went with for ten thousand and five. That was for a, a twenty-seven. Uh, I bid, and whoever this guy Jesus saves, if I catch him, him and I are gonna have some problems. <laughs> the other one I bid nine thousand eight hundred on, and this one right here went for ten thousand. Um, so I couldn't quite figure out where this guy pockets was. So that's me. I'm thinking I'm going to light his pockets, lighten his pockets up, so I can catch him on on the ones I really want. So, and all of these vans had less than fifty thousand miles on. Them. So I, I, I say I push him out here, and I can light his pockets. So right now he's down. Uh, I got him down right now. I think I, I'm, I'm twenty thousand in his pocket. Uh, so the next one I go to, I bid ten thousand again, and he what's the call? Uh, he he uh he bid twelve thousand on it, so I bid ninety eight hundred on this one and see where he went. 
and he 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 he, he went above the ten thousand on that one. But this guy right here, Akin, this was another guy that was bidding with us. He he bid and uh like his breaking point was about thirteen about thirteen thousand thirteen thousand seven hundred breaking point was i see it now now i know next time about where his money is at uh, and this one was the last one and i said i'm going to push him and see how far he go and uh i was going call uh my last bid was 12 12 and um he actually bought it for 1350 so about he, he had he had in here on all of them 13,700 that's what that's what his breaking point um, so I didn't even get not one van. I was I was teed off. Uh, I, I went out. I uh, thought I was going to get at least two of them, and Mike Snead came back with none. <laughs> no vans. And these are, if you look, these are uh, uh, what we call 2008 and 2007 vans uh, that's going for this amount of money. Um, and just last year, I got one for 60. I, I won that one. You saw that was my bid. And that's what I wanted for. So I thought for sure I would get two of them. I didn't get not one. Uh, to get those, I would need about, uh, to get two of those vans, I was going to need about $30,000 to get two of those vans. Um, and it was going to take me, uh, as I saw, about $13,000, about $14,000 to get one. And um, that's what you leave your kids out there to have to compete against. This is not a new car. This is a used car, a used van that I'm going out here. That I remember, I remember this is what I used to pay for them. Uh, I used to pay $1,300 for them, like this one right here, um, this uh, flatbed truck I, I got. Um, that's what I used to pay for them. Uh, but now uh, the prices, this is what people are, are paying for them. So, and, and, and if they were to go back and sell these on the market, they're going to be twenty five, thirty thousand. 30000 that used truck uh, uh, if he goes sell it in the market. So if you're not out here buying assets and preparing your kids um, um, uh, for uh, for what's call called for uh, to uh, to compete with this, uh, you're in trouble. You you're you're in, you're in trouble. And when I came back uh, from the um, I, I I had to take I was coming back uh, home from the auction. I thought. I thought I was going to get one, didn't get one. And I just looked. And I started looking out there on the way back. And I'm coming back into Selma. I mean, into Clayton. It's this, uh, it's this uh, Hispanic grocery store. And I'm looking at that Hispanic grocery store. Uh, that Hispanic grocery store is it, 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 out there. It's, it's, like, it's like a beacon of light when you come around the curve in Clayton. How, how pretty it is. Uh, you go inside, it, it rivals any grocery stores we have uh, in, uh, in the area. And I, I started just counting the grocery stores, um, the, not just the Spanish owned um, grocery stores. And I counted uh, about maybe six or seven Hispanic owned grocery stores in my little area. And I don't think we got five, I don't think we got, we might not even have two African American owned grocery stores. On the whole East Coast that I know that they that we own, um, and it, it, it's it's it, it's it's too as African American men we got to do better than this man we got to get away from this stuff. Um, I'm, I'm looking at supposedly supposed to be our leaders or not leaders but uh, uh, the people who who have pretty good supposed to have influence and they worrying about uh, if a woman is too old and past her time who cares we're getting our butt kicked out here. We gotta change all of this stuff and get out here and start producing. It's embarrassing. It is. It is totally embarrassing that uh, we're getting our butt kicks out here, and every uh, on every ass butt kick. I can't go to an African American grocery store. I I, I, I can't do anything. I, I I don't I don't. We don't have an African American gas station around here. Um. I, we don't we don't have anything. Um, don't have anything uh, that we uh, we can uh, we can uh, don't have anything don't have anything it's embarrassing uh, we we gotta we gotta do better than this um, and you you you're gonna you're gonna we gotta find a way to uh, to get away from being so selfish um, the, we don't have about two or three generations 
of men who is a pure selfish. Um, and I was included in that. I was definitely included in that. Where we we uh, we we then take care of our responsibilities. We made kids and try to walk away from them. Then 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 real and uh, didn't want to put no money in behind them. And uh, <clears throat> we wanted to take our money and and and. And, and crazy stuff with them. Um, I'm one of the. I'm, I'm I'm in there same boat with you all. Um, taking uh, you know here I am taking all my money um, when I'm broke as I don't know what buying motorcycles trying to polish out the frames and extend the uh, <laughs> extend the uh, trying to race motorcycles and stuff broke. Getting getting these facades. Don't own didn't own anything. Uh, I didn't I didn't I didn't I didn't come to the realization. That I um that I didn't own anything and that I'll kick get my butt kicked until five years ago. Five years ago is when um Abdul and I ran to Abdul and Ron and they they gave me a butt whoop and I saw what they were doing and what we were doing and uh, that's what woke me up. And if I hadn't ran into them, I would have been comfortable still doing the same thing I was doing, going out here making money, repairing appliances not buying no property, not developing anything, not building anything, just spend every penny I got. Just spending it. Um, you know, on on stuff that's not gonna not gonna create no wealth or anything. Um and we can't do that anymore. Can't do that anymore. We we gotta get out here. You gotta be doing something. If you're not building a business, you gotta be buying some assets. You know, um uh, that's the thing. I'm gonna be asking the young kids, hey uh, you know what you want to do when you grow up, and um, and changing that narrative, and and same thing. I'll be asking the grown men, hey, what do you own and control? That's my, that's my thing. When I when I meet somebody, uh, I ain't asking them no more. Uh, it used to be where you go to school. I ain't doing that no more. What do you own and control, man? What do you own and control, brother? Let's talk about. It. Let me let me see what you own and control. And um, and that's that's the stuff that. Um, I'm going to be asking uh, um, the grown men, hey, what do you own and control? Let's talk. See, see if we can do some business together. Um, and and, and we, gotta, we, gotta, we gotta start um, raising the bar for each other, um, making that cool, making 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 uh, uh, making uh, uh, going out here. We we gotta we gotta have something to show that we've been here. We can't just keep depending upon everybody else. Um, to 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 carry do all the heavy lifting for us um, can't do it no more. You know uh, we we got we got to get out here. We got to start doing stuff. Um, no you know, no like I say I've done just a little bit. I've done just a little bit. Um, and uh, and talking to the people uh, Saturday when I was out there, uh, you would have thought I was a unicorn. Um, uh, you own that build. You own that business. I go there all the time. I didn't know you own it. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I, I didn't know we had any black businessmen here. So you know stuff like that. You know, and we we got to change narrative, and we we got to we got to get moving, um, and we got to get moving fast. Um, so that that's what uh, we got to do. We got to get these kids something to do, um, and and put them on the path where they can actually start. Uh, um, becoming entrepreneurs and business owners. Um, this stuff about football, basketball, we got to rethink this. Look at them. Look at just look at Dion. Look at his hands. Um, all his fingers broken and twisted. His leg gonna his leg gonna have to get amputated before it's over with. Uh, cutting toes and stuff off. Look at Kenny. Look at Kenny. Um, uh, uh, Kenny. Uh, what's his name? Uh, on on the uh, talk show host uh, uh, with. Uh, Jack and then look when he get up and walk, how his knees and stuff are gone. Uh, you see, you saw Dr. J this weekend. Uh, could barely hold that the, uh, the statue, hands and knees and all that stuff going. Look at that. Uh, look at uh, they, they scrambling and they bring to each other um, in football with CTE and all that stuff. Their bodies are all broken up. Uh, you are gonna do all of that for uh, for a paycheck when you can easily. Um, become a, a, a electrical contractor, have a great life. You can have a great life as an electrical contractor. You can have a great life as a plumbing contractor. Have a great life as an HVAC contractor. And your body ain't going to get tore up all like that. Um, you, you have a, a great quality of life later on in life. 
Um, and so you, you, we, we got to rethink this, uh, where we, we just, we use our bodies that became expendable uh, because of this, uh, just to play these sports. Look at, look at their feet when uh, they, uh, they show the NBA players and football player feet. Look at from all that running and stuff, how their feet and stuff are just totally messed up. Are we going to continue destroying our bodies for other people's entertainment? Can't do that. We got to get to a point where we start back using this again. And we start developing and creating stuff. And we have it in us to do it, just like everybody else. Um, but we just done right now, um, we, we, we don't focus all our, all our, all our ability and stuff. We have just pushed it all into inter being entertainment for everybody. And then after, after doing it, when you get there, uh, still now, you have going there, um, music artists still hollering about they want their masters and then they got robbed and stuff. After all these years, how in the world are you still getting robbed for your masters? You still getting robbed for everything. Um, same thing, the, the uh, basketball players and all that, uh, getting robbed and all that. It's, why? After all these years, you still getting robbed. You, you ain't thinking about building anything. It's crazy. It's crazy. You know, I don't care nothing about the, the, the gold chains and, and what type of cars and stuff you drive. I don't care nothing about that. I don't care not too soon about it. Um, same thing, if you build stuff, I was talking to somebody. Um, I forget who it was. I forget who I was talking to. But uh, we were talking about um, building businesses and stuff. Um, not just being, being the, not just renting from nobody. Uh, you go out there and you buy your building. You, you own your asset. Um, back in the days, if you had a barbershop, you owned the building that barbershop was in. Um, same thing. If you owned, a, you had a restaurant, you owned the building the restaurant was in. We want to continue doing that same thing uh, so you have something to, uh, to leave your kids and grandkids and stuff. Uh, that's one thing I love about down here in Selma. Down here in Selma, these people are getting to it. They're getting to it. They're buying their buildings. They are, they, the people who own, uh, who own those businesses, majority of them own those buildings also. And if they don't own a building, they looking to buy one. Uh, they don't. They ain't looking to be written and stuff. They getting added down here. So the president has been a president has been set, and that's what they doing. Uh, they looking to to buy an own, and they they building it. They take pride in it, and I love that. You know that that's what uh, we got to do. We got to get back at it. There's still a lot of places that you know, and that's the thing too. Don't don't you don't have to be in the the center where everything is already built up. I'll show you all that. Uh, take your money. Uh, go on out there to these uh, other little small places. If you're in North Carolina, go on out. You you, you probably can't find anything down in uh, Rocky Mountain right now. But you can go to Kenston. You can go to Garrysburg. You can go to Enfield. You can go to Whitaker. You can go to all those little small areas and, 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 and set up a flag now and buy stuff uh, because it's still cheap. It's still dirt cheap. Um, but you're going to wait another two or three years. You're not going to be able to get that. Um, but you're going to do that. You're going to have to start going down further east. And that's my plan. I'm following through. I, I, I told my wife and them, I'm following 301. <laughs> so I'm on the train on further down and, uh, and, and buying, buying properties in those little spots, in those areas. And um, that's what you do. You buy those little buildings like playing Monopoly. And, um, you buy them one year, fix them up the next year. Um, but we got to do this stuff. We got to do this stuff. We got to stop playing around. We got to get serious, and we got we got to be intentional about how, where we're spending our money. And we got to we got to make an impact, man. Or else, uh, or else we die. Or else we die. Uh, you, you, uh, I don't I don't know. Um, uh, only, only so much room for OnlyFans, I guess. You have to make an OnlyFans page or, or something. Um, but this right here, we we got we're gonna have to make a move and we're gonna have to get out here and start doing something. I'm gonna read some of the comments we have, and um, and then I'm gonna be getting out of here because, like I said, um, now I'm actually uh, uh, working on the, the conference. We're gonna have one more boot camp. I'm gonna make that announcement this week on the day that we're gonna do the boot camp, and um, on that boot camp, I'm gonna actually do the. Uh, do the commercial washer and dryer on that Monday. So I'll uh, be on the lookout. It's going to be in April. Um, I'm going to make that announcement this week, so be on the lookout for that uh, also. Um, 
Uh, what's up, uh, Wild Wind? Say what's up, yo, Big Mike. What's going on? Uh, that's the tickets to the convention. If you would uh, purchase those tickets, uh, Quentin Hodge. Hey, Mike and ABC fans, congrats again, brother. Thank you. I appreciate. It. That's another thing too. If you're gonna be doing the ice cream, um, ice cream, they normally normally we get going about next month, March. Uh, that's when the uh, what's called usually uh, a lot of festivals and the stuff kick off. Um, this one right here, Soul Food Feast, was one of the first ones that jumped off. And this weekend, um, the numbers climb back up. Uh, we, it's going to be like 80 degrees this week here in North Carolina. I saw all of, not only here, but I saw um, on our uh, Facebook group, people do ice cream. I saw everybody say, hey, my numbers are up. <laughs> you know, we, uh, we we in it now because my numbers been climbing. But this weekend, the numbers hit. Uh, so uh, we in ice cream season now, so I feel good, and I'm ready to get my um, actual container for more. Uh, Zoe Holiday said, good evening, family. Hey, how you doing? Uh, BK from the Rockies. Unfortunately, when I was a kid in Eastern North Carolina, everyone talked about chasing the ball up and down the field, floor or court. That is uh, got old quick for me. Yeah, it, it, it is. Um, that's all the kids got is just uh, – um, Basketball, football, like I said, they don't always say baseball anymore and uh and rap. Oh, okay. Eric's Bass. Hey, how you doing? Uh hey Mike, me and the wife was back in your parlor on Saturday. Taste was just as good as the first our big inspiration. Okay, thank you, man. I appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we uh we got some stuff coming up. Um uh, we actually doing new packaging. I got some new flavors coming out. Uh, the Joko Ice, um, we made some changes to it, uh, and we, we took it out there uh, yes, uh, this past weekend for the Soul Food Feast. And um, we, 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 um, I was just giving it out uh, to the actual uh, to, to anybody who wanted it. So we didn't, we didn't actually sell our ice cream at the Soul Food Feast. Um, I was giving away my Joko Ice because I wanted to make sure it was good before <laughs> I, I needed to get feedback. And... Um, and I got very good feedback from the Joko Ice. Uh, we gave all of it away, and, and I saw many people going back for second, third, and fifth. Matter of fact, one of my um, one of my friends, uh, one of uh, my friends, his wife, I know she got the mango. I, I know she ate like five or six cups of mango, you know, and, and she wanted to come get a half a gallon of the mango uh, uh, Joko Ice. So I think I'm good with my Joko Ice now. And that's going to be something I'm going to be really pushing down in my walk-up trailer, too. Uh, Daryl to finish it. What's up, Mike and ABC? Hey, how you doing? Uh, what's going on, 89? Dr. Funk, good to talk to you earlier today. Uh, Paul Brown, what's up, Mike and ABC family? Hey, how you doing? Um, 89, Dr. Funk. Uh, it's income tax season, Mike. The competition on the auction may be stiff. Yeah, uh, it, uh, it was. Uh, that, that I knew that, too. I said, going in. Um, uh, it might be tax season, people getting the taxes, but I, 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 I thought, you know, if, if I thought if, if I was going to go buy that truck from a, a car lot, you know, uh, off of a, uh, a dealer, it, it'd probably go for about 15, uh, go for about maybe 14, 15,000. Um, I don't know what he's going to, what they're going to sell it for, um, or, or what, but, uh, for, for what they're going, what they went for, uh, <laughs> Man, I, I hate to see what they're gonna put the price. They're gonna probably put the price tag at about twenty, a uh, uh, twenty-two, twenty-three, on that truck. Um, so, Ben Nash, peace, Mike and ABC fam. Hey, how you doing? Uh, Patrick Young, what's good, Mike? Uh, what's good, ABC fam? Hey, how you doing? Okay, thank you. I, I appreciate it. Uh, a matter of fact, um, they told me, <laughs> uh, thank you for coming by. When I got back, uh, um, um, the young ladies that was working in the ice cream parlor, they told me uh, uh, a, a family from Durham came by to, uh, and, uh, and bought some ice cream. They, they told me to tell you hi. And uh, I couldn't figure out who they were talking about. Uh, but thank you for coming. I, I appreciate it. Now, now I know who they're talking about. Noka Co. Yeah, they probably are car dealers. Yeah, I, I I thought that too. That's why I was trying to run them up. Uh, I say, hey, I can lighten their pockets up a little bit, but no, nah, it didn't. It didn't do. It didn't work. 
there are the furniture. It's hard to sell um, people in our community on building things because everybody wants to be flashy. Um, they'd rather buy uh, brand name clothes than build a community. Uh, glad you said that. Let me find something right here. Um, uh, you know, that's, uh, that was one of the things. They, they used to have a documentary back in the day. Uh, let me see if this Let me see here. They used to have a documentary back in the day uh, about uh, about that. Let me see if I can find it. Um, how to sell to the Negro. Uh, let me see if I can find that real quick. Uh, but that was one of the things that they said. Um, actually, I look at the video when they uh, when they do it now. Uh, last time I looked at it, <clears throat> I felt bad about the documentary. I'm going to share this screen with you all. I felt bad about the documentary uh, on here. Let me see if you all can hear this. Here, put a one in the comments. Okay, you say you can't hear it. Uh, let me let me uh, go back and see if I can uh, get it for you. I got share the share the audio tag. Okay, all right. I got to do it like this. All right, let me start it back. I'll start it back for you. Okay. Okay, I got it now. Let me let me share it. See if you can hear it now. I started back. To say about selling to the Negro. The secret of selling to the Negro is expressed in one word. That word is recognition. Now there's nothing unusual about that. People want to be recognized. They need you recognition. Can hear from one. That's basic in all of us. But perhaps because he's had so little of it. The Negro needs even more. He needs to feel important and appreciated. This need is a very real and important one. It shows up even in many of the Negro's shopping habits. Anyone who sells or wants to sell to the Negro customer okay, should know about some of these habits. Three habits in particular play a big part in every sales transaction. To begin with, most Negroes buy by brand. They ask for products by name. They're quick to turn down off brands. Do you wonder why? Well, listen to what this customer is thinking. Hmm. That last hat I bought just didn't hold up at all. You see, for a long time, the Negro has been sold a lot of shoddy, second-class merchandise. So now he asks for name brands in order to make sure he gets his money's worth. Buying by brand, that's the first important Negro buying hat. Now for the second. The Negro buys good quality merchandise. Symbols of quality and prestige are very important to the Negro customer. 
This woman, for example, is buying fine crystal there. But she is also buying the admiration and approval of her friends and relatives. Listen to her thoughts. My, isn't it beautiful? I can hardly wait to show it to Sally and Joan. It's a well-known fact that many Negro customers are influenced by the opinions of others. What their friends may think of a certain item often decides whether or not the sale is made. So remember, the Negro buys quality merchandise. That's the second important point. And here's the third thing to remember when selling to a Negro customer. When he specifically asks for one thing, don't try to sell him something else. Don't try to switch him at the point of sale. If you do, probably react something like this. Doesn't he think I've got the money to pay for it? There's a reason for this reaction. Again, because he's had experience with cheap merchandise, the Negro resents being offered a substitute. He wants to be sold on quality, not price. The Negro buys by brand, he buys quality, and he doesn't like to be switched at point of sale. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so so that's that's uh, that's one of the things they 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 know about selling to us. That's how somebody like Grant Cardone and how they'll come in and they 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 they've been selling to us with that stuff uh, forever. And that's that's one of the reasons too why um, a lot of the YouTubers and all that stuff they they put on uh, like the Rolexes and they they bring the fancy cars and stuff. Uh, because uh, that's how they, they've been, everybody knows that's how you sell to us. Um, um, so, but uh, there's one other thing I'm going to show you about that, that documentary. That, uh, uh, that I, 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 as I look at it, that actually uh, makes me feel, uh, feel kind of sad. Is this, one, is this part right here. This is something... Uh, that was pretty common. This this was done like in 1952, 54, when they uh, 1954 when they uh, done this documentary, and uh, and from this documentary, uh, this this is uh, uh, this was stuff that was pretty common. You could go to a black grocery store. Let let's see here. Um, this right here is something that uh, I look at and I say, man. You can't find that now. The order? Well, to tell you the truth, I don't do anything. <laughs> anything different, that is. I've been calling on these accounts long enough to know that the Negro just wants to be treated like everybody else. No matter who you're calling on, a little friendliness and courtesy help a lot. But naturally, anybody resents being patronized or talked down to. So I usually call a man... Mr. Brown, Mr. Smith, or Mr. whatever his name is, until he tells me to call him by his first name. And, of course, I always stick to business. I stay away from talk about race or religion or politics. That goes for talk about Negro celebrities, too. You know, this business about what good prize fighters and singers the Negroes are. Who cares? When a guy's in business, no matter what color his skin is, he's interested in making a living. In making money. That's uppermost in his mind. I guess maybe what I'm saying is, is that I try to help any way I can. Sometimes with displays or ad materials. Or an idea once in a while. The important thing is that if it helps push sales for the dealer, it helps push them for me, too. Okay. Uh, now, when the last... <laughs> Uh, when the last time you seen that uh, African American grocery store? He going in making sales at. Don't see it anymore. And that was in the fifties. We ain't got none of that now. Now uh, it'd be the exact opposite. You go in, you, you try to go to the grocery store, and all the African American men standing around the front of it, uh, asking for your change and all that stuff on your way out. It's crazy. Um, big act. Say, yo, ABC fam, hey, what's going? Uh, Untamed Kane Gold Pyronomics, what's happening? Uh, Paul Brown, I have four nephews driving truck. Been thinking to get them into the appliance repair to no avail. Been trying to get them to uh, appliance repair, no avail. Yeah, uh, keep pushing them, man. Uh, what are they doing to those people in those trucks, getting them out of there? 
Appliance Boot Camp. Uh, that's the actual link to the actual uh, stream yard if uh, you would like to come on. Uh, all right, uh, Slick, do you, uh, did you have the meeting? I know I meet on Wednesday. I meet on Wednesday with uh, with the I don't want to call the name with the uh, my business mentor and know the other guy that uh, that used to help build the actual third party warranty company. Um, he did call me today. He probably thinking today is a, a holiday, President's Day, uh, so he'll probably reach back out. If not, I'll reach out to him. I don't want to call their name because uh, people might know them. Mail appliance repair. Hey, Mike, I've been in appliance tech for over two years. I have the knowledge. I just need more information about starting my own business. What's the price of the package? Uh, you see it scrolling at the bottom of the screen right there. Um, the pr price, uh, it is starting at $50. Uh, $50 a month uh, for 10 months, $500, or you can pay just $500 if you just want to apply uh, boot camp online. If you want all of the courses online, it's seventeen hundred dollars. Um, you don't need to come to the hands-on. You just buy the online. Uh, Patrick Young, know, Mike, I see you really getting into that commercial side. Uh, yeah, I just started uh, 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 accepting the calls. Like I said, I, I needed to get me a quick twelve thousand last week because I I thought I was gonna buy me a van. <laughs> I thought I was gonna buy two vans for twelve thousand today. I ended up I didn't have anything, uh, but uh, uh, I, I, I got twelve thousand still in my pocket to do something with. Uh, so um, I'm, I'm now I'm just uh, it was it was good to get that out the way. I'm a little I'm twelve thousand stronger than I was last week this time. So I'm just now focused on getting that um, shipping container put together and starting on my houses. Uh, Kurt Shaw, uh, what's up, Mike and ABC? Hey, what's going on, Mike? I see Gerard or uh, will will fix it. Uh, Plaza Bear has got a successful course up and running. Looks like it's going to be a quality course. ABC Disciple spreading out. Yeah, if uh, uh, Gerard is very good in seal systems, he, he's really really good. So if he's putting something out there, um, I know it's going to be good. Uh, Tyran TV, I uh, say so what's up, and Tyran is going to be. Like, uh, like I told you before, at a national conference on that Thursday night, Tyran will be uh, actually performing. D. Charles, the worst thing about that, doc that documentary was it was financed and produced by Johnson Publishing Company, Ebony Magazine, John H. Johnson. Yeah, what he was doing, he was actually trying to entice people. He was enticing the uh, people to ad actually advertise in his magazine. He actually have uh, stats of people that they advertise in his magazine that African Americans trust him. Um, he has it in that video if you go look at it. African Americans trust him, and um, they, they had a, a, a higher success rate when they tracked him. Uh, so he was using that to uh, to get the to get the bigger corporations to actually uh, um, buy advertising in his magazine. Uh, DC now, so what's up, Mike? Uh, and uh, ABC fam, hey, how you doing? Uh, Keys DB, what's the name of that documentary? The Secret of Selling to the Negro. Mail appliance repair, so thanks, Mike. Uh, you're welcome. Yeah, uh, that 50, 50, $50 will be good with you. Um, get that 50 pack. Uh, it'll make it good for you. you. Get out here and you can really make some money. Uh, a lot of people are buying up on uh, that fifty dollar uh, package. I'm glad to see that because that's, that's that's a great price point to get in and start making some money. Uh, so, but once again, we're going to have the national convention coming up on June 15th, 16th, and 17th. Um, tickets. Uh, you can get a link in the description to the tickets. And like I said, we got to start doing better. We got to be more intentional uh, to get out here and start building and um, and and buying assets. Just don't take this money that uh, y'all making great money with this appliance uh, repair. Just don't be taking this money and just spending it. Um, you got to start building something for the future uh, coming up um, for the, for your kids and grandkids. Um, you got you got to start building building something for them. 
And because uh, if not, I don't I don't know what they're gonna do. Because um, they they're gonna they, no, I don't I don't know what they're gonna do. If you, if you don't build something for them, uh, they they're just gonna be short. And the land and um and um and and the properties are going quick and fast. Um, they're going quick and fast. And uh, so I don't I don't know I don't know. Uh, if you if you don't you gonna make a change. I, just, I I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what else to say to you to, to, to get, get us motivated and get us moving. I just don't know what else we can say or do. But we got a whole pipeline of young kids, African-American kids. They only got three choices, they think, uh, to, to make it. And I, I, and uh, we got, a, we got a, several things. Uh, 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 we, got, we got thousands and thousands. We got two or three generations of African American men don't don't uh, don't think they uh, can do anything, um, but argue on, on on the internet with women uh, instead of getting out here building stuff. So I don't know. Um, D. Charles, at no point did he even suggest even hiring a black person to sell to other blacks. At least then a black person could get the commission. Uh, yeah, I, I think what happened during that time, um, it, it was like I said, it was in the 1950s. It won't many black uh, black salesmen um, at at uh, at Coca Cola or uh, at those companies. Uh, so most of the salesmen were going to be white, but he wanted them to actually buy um, buy advertising ads in their um, in their actual uh, in their actual in the actual magazine. Now the fact that uh, that the black people are owning the restaurants, um, and the, uh, not only on owning the grocery stores, but owning the restaurants and all those other places. Um, now, I, 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 I might take this. I might say, hey, uh, let, let's make a swap and, and go back because back then, um, you, uh, you had, you, uh, you had unemployment rate for, um, uh, with, with our employment rate. Amongst each other was at an all-time high. Now we don't uh, we don't have any uh, we don't we don't employ each other. Uh, we don't we don't own anything. We don't we don't own anything. Um, and <laughs> we just don't own anything. It's sad. It's sad that we don't we don't own anything. Uh, to the point, um, I was looking at uh, the post that uh, um, I don't I, like. I said I, I hate calling people names. I don't want to get people in trouble. Well, a post uh, in one of the appliance groups over the weekend where a brother uh, posted he had a church that, that, that was hounding him because they didn't have no money to, to, to go do some type of uh, uh, event. They wanted him to use his credit card to, 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 uh, to, to rent a truck for him and they didn't have no money to get nowhere and do nothing. It was crazy. Uh, it was crazy. Um, and and, and uh, and I, 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 like I said, I don't see how in the world a church be broke. Uh, and like I told them, there's no way possible you can follow the, the teachings within Proverbs and be broke. I don't, I, and that's what they always say in church. I never see the righteous forsaken or see begging for bread, but they were doing some serious begging for that, on that young brother. Um, not only do they want him to pay for it, they want to use his credit card and all of that. It was just crazy. Um, slick. Land prices jumped, uh, uh, jumped, uh, jumped up around here. Yeah, it is crazy. Um, it is crazy. Um, Daryl, the finisher. Um, our youngsters' uh, confidence is shot. I had a hard time convincing them that they weren't, um, that they won't break something if they come to work with me. <laughs> wow. Well, I have a bunch of, I have a bunch of men the same way. Um, I, I gotta be careful because <laughs> I, I don't mind I, I don't mind talking uh, talking to people and stuff. Uh, uh, um, I don't mind talking to people and stuff because I know the confidence uh, is broken. But God knows uh, I, I I have some guys that have called me every day, including the weekends, um, for almost uh, almost two or three weeks about fifty dollar course. You know, um, now say, tell me again 
what I'm going to get for this $50. <laughs> Man, you're going to get this, 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 this. Uh, can I do this? Yeah, just buy the course. It's just fifty dollars, man. Buy the course. Buy the course. Um, and same thing. I, I get some people uh, that, that calls and um, and just can't pull the trigger. Yeah, just can't pull the trigger. I don't know what it is. They just won't pull the trigger. Uh, Aaron H nine six five. We just opened a scratch and dent uh, appliance store in South Texas. Okay, congratulations. Looking to jump into a plant repair game. All right, that's good stuff. Um, you're going to make some money uh, next, these next couple of months, uh, tax season, if you stocked up. Um, okay. Uh, slick. Wholesalers are sending certified letters, emails, calling all day, texting. I don't know the future, but hopefully something nice coming down the pipeline as far as housing. Yeah, it is. Um, it is. It's, uh, it's, it's coming down. Uh the, uh, the, uh, I didn't know, but uh, uh, right now where I where I got my properties at, uh, we voted the number place for some place for people to move and all that. Uh, so people are coming here. Uh, everybody's getting out of those areas like North Carolina, uh, Texas, and Florida, all those places. People are leaving California. People are leaving New York. People are leaving those high population areas. And they're coming down here. They're going to have some place to go. Um, my app. Hey, Mike and ABC fam. Hey, how you doing? Uh, Detroit, that documentary uh, actually landed him a spot on the board for those companies. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mike, I have seen this particular video several times. The more I see it, the more powerful and impression it leaves. I agree with Dr. Umar Johnson that the skill trades were diminished. Uh, yeah, it was. It was. It was diminished on purpose. It was. Uh, it, 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 just ask. Just, just ask. Just, just ask a young guy, hey, what, uh, what, do, you, uh, what do you, ask a young African American kid, what do you want to do um, when you grow up? And you'll see they, they just going to put them into these three things. And, and then you got the, uh, you got the African American men. That's all we know: is football, basketball, and, and rappers, and or, or or doing some type of dancing and stuff. And so that that's what we 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 we, we run there and and, uh, and 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 try to do the same thing. Uh, gonna uh, gonna uh, start basketball programs for these kids and stuff. And um, and from there. Uh, Pay you need to pay me to work them out. No, all this crap. Even even the community college at Johnson Community College. Why in the world do you need to be playing basketball at the community college? That I do not know. Uh, just uh, at that point, you 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 don't need to be playing no basketball and stuff at no community college. They just basketball, basketball, basketball. Forget it. At that, at, well, when you got if you got to go play basketball at the community college, you better off. It's just getting in the rec league and playing. <laughs> That's what we call the alcohol league. Get in the alcohol beer league and play there and be done with it. Seriously, these are the only career choices. Do I hope this is just a line to catch? No, it's not. It's not. It's not. I, I don't really. I got videos. I just. Uh, um, I got to figure out a way to black out the kids' uh, um, hit, uh, faces and stuff. It's not. It's not. Uh, it's not. It's, it's not no clickbait. This is the actual truth. Um, this is the actual truth, <laughs> right here. This is the truth. That's all you got as African American. Um, who going? Who going? Who, where, where you learning? Um, where, where else you going to learn? These, these kids never even heard of a CPA. They don't know. They don't. They don't know what a contractor does. I, I, one of the kids I asked them, "Would you like to be a contractor?" Uh, yeah. I said, "You know what a contractor do." Yeah, they write the contracts for basketball and football players. I said, no, no that's what an agent. I'm talking about a contract. Build this building that you're in. They don't know. That's all they. That's all they're getting is the football, basketball, and rapping. That's it. That's it. They, that, that's it. And, and the school system content to let them do it. I'm not going to make them read and learn any of this stuff. Why we don't have a robotics and stuff uh, competition? No, I, uh, I, I no, I love the frat. Um, I, I love it. Um, you know, but 
they talk about getting together and having step in having step in competition for the youth and stuff. Building these youth programs have step in competition. We need to be getting together and having robot robotics, teaching these kids how to program um, and, and how electronics and stuff work. How, how these microwave frequencies work. Because that's where everything is going to. In a, in a doggone refrigerator. You all know that GE refrigerator. The, da- the daggone water filter got a, 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 a it got got a, a, a Wi-Fi on it. So if you don't if you don't put the right water filter in there, uh, it won't let the water come out the door and all that stuff. This is the type of stuff these kids going to be uh, exposed to. That they they'll figure out how to hop and step and all that stuff later. But we, we that's why we got to put our interest in, and we got to put that into them to get them out here competing. Uh, DCNF. Now, let's not make excuses for people. Too many have taken the course and are currently having success. If they really want to something, uh, they really want to do something, they will. Uh, yeah, they they will. That they are. I'll figure out. Some people just like to uh, just like to um, be a part of. It. They like to talk about. It. They don't want to do. It. And um, and um, I'll, I'll figure that one out too. <laughs> They can figure out how to get the new Jordan releases. <laughs> yep, yep, no doubt. Uh, is that all you know? That ain't all I know. Uh, what do you mean? Um, nah, that that is uh, that that that's all the the, the kids are putting out. Um, so, um, nah, that ain't all I know. Um, so, uh, so I asked the kids. Like I say, I asked the kids. Um, what it is they want to do, and uh, that's what they told me. So I, I'm going to ask you what I asked the grown men, uh, Mr. K.C. Motley. Uh, what do you own and control? Whatever you own and control, that you uh, that, that ain't all you know. Um, put put the LLC name and what what state um, the LLC is registered in, so we can go see uh, if you have an LLC. Uh, if you own real estate, if you own it in an LLC. Uh, put the uh, it's public knowledge, so it ain't like you don't know. Uh, if you own real estate, um, put the uh, uh, give us the uh, address or your LLC that you buy your real estate in, and let's see what it is that you uh, that you know. Um, the kids don't know nothing but rapping and uh, and basketball and football. That's always been pushed down their throat. Um, we want to know now what the grown men know. So the grown men, we don't want to hear you tell us that you know this, 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 this. We want to see it. Uh, so uh, if Mr. K.C. Motley, just put in uh, your LLC, what state is raised again, and so we can just search it at Secretary of State and see uh, see what it is. Uh, so that's stuff we doing nowadays. We ain't playing no more games. Now, Slick, I heard a phrase this past weekend, police yourself, maybe using the word police instead of discipline. Uh, may help our people do better. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, my app, uh, society. Yep. Uh, Mike, that dude case the most. That's fine. I, I like the trolls. I like the trolls. That's fine. Uh, Casey Motley. Uh, America owes a debt to all American descendants of slaves. Reparation talk was what got Martin Luther King killed. I'm not a troll, to y'all. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, Angel George. Hey, how you doing, Angel? Uh, that's one of our Selma's uh, talented right there. Hey, Mike, let's not discourage the young men from participating in athletes, athletics. At least they are working towards higher education goals. I don't think there are goals to reach. The, uh, I don't think there I don't think there are able to reach the NBA. Uh, that's a, that, that's one of the uh, one of the things I have uh, that I have a break with that too, Angel. Um, uh, with our um, young men and women, we think the only way that they can uh, get higher education is, is through uh, is through athletics. Um, uh, it, it shouldn't that shouldn't be their uh, uh, that shouldn't be their responsibility as young men and women. To be trying to figure out how they're going to fund their uh, their educational needs. That should be on the parents. Um, as parents, we shouldn't be sending our kids out there 
and trying to make them figure out how they're going to actually um, uh, be able to go to college if they so far if they got the capacity to go to college. That should be us as the adults to figure that out. That kid responsibility uh, should be to enjoy uh, athletics if they like it, um, as what is what is uh, what is intentionally supposed to be just an extracurricular activity, um, not a way. Uh, for them to uh, get to college. That's the parents' responsibility uh, to figure out how they're going to get to college and how they're going to pay for them to go to college. Um, so that's, that's I, I have an issue with that. And um, um, and also, you can get to college through academics also. And sometimes it might be to the point where uh, if you don't, if your family don't have the money uh, for you to go to um, the university, with the costs and stuff the way universities are right now, uh, maybe you should look into maybe a trade school or look at the community college and, um, and, and, and get out there and start working. And then you can actually uh, then pay your way or get in. If you, if, if, if you want to go the route of corporate America, once you get in corporate America, a lot of times corporate America, they have, uh, they have uh, matching uh, um, money to go to college. So you can go that way. Um, I don't think we should be uh, taking our boys and, and taking all their time pushing them towards athletics to get to college. Um, I think we need to take that other route, start pushing their head and getting into the books to get to college. And then, you know, once you get to college, um, you, if you go to school for uh, if you if you go to school for bas if you go to school on basketball scholarship, there ain't no education in that. <laughs> they, 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 we don't seen that. Uh, you you're there you are you are, you are uh, a student athlete that's what you are you 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 there and if you don't uh, and they they can pull your uh, pull your uh, scholarship at any time um, you you uh, that's uh, most people I know that uh, my friends and stuff that played uh, when they was in college and stuff uh, most of them um, ended up not even liking the sport afterwards because they got burned out because it became a job. Um, hey, Mike, Dr. Umar Johnson having a grand open for his school in a few months. Okay, I, I didn't know that. Um, society, uh, my society trying to fill the pipe, prison pipeline with those choices. A business can change your family. Yeah, it is. And that's the thing, too. Uh, I was telling um, one of the young men, um, you, know, uh, uh, you, know, you know, here you got, you got Le LeBron. Why in the world LeBron and Dwayne Wade care about their son playing basketball? Uh, no, uh, that I just don't know. Um, I, I I couldn't figure out why the, why do your son need a basketball scholarship? If you Dwayne Wade, if you uh, if you what you call if uh, if you LeBron James, if you Puff P Diddy, why in the world your your son need a basketball scholarship? I said the same thing about. Um, Master P uh, with Romeo. I was like, why do I need to get a basketball scholarship? And then it came came out they couldn't afford to pay for him to go to college. <laughs> so, and I, I I've been trying to figure it out for, for forever why their kids even they even learn their kids about uh, about the sports. Uh, you know, they supposed to be multimillionaires. Why do they even care about their kids getting get basketball scholarships and whatnot and football scholarships um, when they multimillionaires? Uh, I'm not no multi-millionaire, but to pay for my daughters to go to in-school uh, universities, it won't bad. It won't. There hasn't been no struggle, and uh, to pay cash for. It. Uh, so it, it, it's not that it's not that much of a ain't that much of money to do it. You know, you no. Know, if they like the sport, yeah, but if they're doing it just for the scholarship. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. You by the time you do. Uh, by the time you do all of those travel leagues and paying the extra stuff, you could have paid for a PhD most of the time. Um, Mr. O, they have programmed us to be the menstrual class of people, just entertainers and perform. Yeah, they have. They have. They have. And we got we got plenty of we got um we got plenty of plenty of people to uh, play basketball. Matter of fact, I don't know we might be in trouble <laughs> if you saw the slam dunk contest this past weekend. Uh, we, I, I know you you got you got all of the African and brothers and stuff that that's there that's uh, taking all your spots that you used to have, and uh, now you got 
uh, uh, what do we call, uh, McClellan or whatever. He don't want a slam dunk contest. He's the best dunker right now in the NBA. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> matter of fact, matter of fact, I, I ain't got to tell them not to worry about no basketball. <laughs> that basketball is going to be going in a little bit. Maybe then they'll know. Uh, Ernest Anderson, no excuses. Uh, just do it. Yep. Uh, if you can't tell, if you can use then it's nothing. Okay. Um, slick. I put five. I put, let them come out. Uh, let Tracy come out. Okay, there you go. There you go. Congratulations. Let, now let them come out. Uh, I have uh, I've had ministers ask about appliance repair. Then they start talking about working through community colleges and charter schools, hustling backwards is institutions don't uh, don't control. Thanks for the uh, what you do, by the way. Continue to do what you do. Thank you, Rich. I, I appreciate that, Angel. You too. Angel does a lot. Uh, yeah, that's great. There we go. Casey Lemoton. Uh understood. Mike Clam Construction LLC, Homer Glenn in um, Illinois. I own a construction company. Yes, there you go. You my man. You my man. So yeah, do not put uh, do not put Casey Motley into no uh, into no timeout anymore. Uh, he 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 he's he's producing and doing stuff. So he and he has a right to talk and have a good conversation. So let 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 him, let him stay up. He's not a troll. Um, we, uh, he's not a troll. So uh, with that, we go. Uh, he he can he can say whatever he likes. So he, he, he actually is doing something. Uh, Mike, a lot of people have forgotten the skilled tradesmen uh, were the ones who supported the civil rights movement. It was the skilled trades entrepreneurs who built Wall Street, uh, Black Wall Street in the U.S. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Um, and because of the skilled trades, they don't realize, people just don't realize, uh, just haven't been able to do the skilled trades, what you can do. Um, at the, at the event Saturday, uh, what's my call? One of the uh, one of the food trucks. Uh, uh, matter of fact, Mr. Glenn food truck. Uh, uh, where uh, it was shorting out and kicking out the GFCIs, the breakers. Uh, so who do they come at? I'm, I'm there uh, two minutes before it's time for me to go get my award. Uh, they, they come tap me on the shoulder. Uh, um, um, Mr. Sneed, you mind, uh, uh, Mr. We have a problem with the food truck. Can you come out here and take a look at it real quick? Oh, yeah, no problem. Go out there, figure out uh, uh, what's going on, fix it real quick, come back, get the award. Uh, and then uh, when Mr. Glenn get uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, Mr. Glenn, um, he got opened back up on um, on Wednesday. So he, he texted me today. Uh, uh, you think you can uh, fix my help me fix my food truck tomorrow? Yeah, that's no problem. I know what's wrong with it. So, so that that's just the benefit of having a skilled tradesman there. Um, a skilled tradesman there. If I won't dare and didn't know the skilled trades, he got packed up his food truck. Go. Same thing. If uh, uh if a uh, skilled tradesman, if I didn't know what I know, Mr. Glenn got to take his food truck and go set it on somebody's lot. And right now, it'll probably take him weeks to get it. But because of the skilled trades that I have, I'm able to go out there and fix it. Um, Mr. O, then you got young boys thinking they're going to make it selling drugs. Most of them don't even make $100,000 selling drugs. Yep. Um, my apps. Anyone who has played sports in college knows that it's like having a job. And you cannot get a paid job. It's a bad deal. Yeah. Uh, that has changed recently with NIL, but who's getting it? <laughs> Uh, very few people. Yep. We need more Valerie L. Thomas. Okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, we got plenty of effort. Um. Uh, yeah, Casey, man, we appreciate you, man. I'm, I'm proud of you. Proud of you. Um. Uh, proud of you, man. Yeah, I'm passionate about us, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's no problem. Uh, I, 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 I say I, I like that. I like that. But what happened? We got, like I say, this this next generation. Wait, this next generation. These past, 
uh, generation starting in the 70s on down to where we're at, um, it just uh, got messed up. It just uh, got messed up. And we got we got to fix it. We got to fix it. Yeah, come on down to the conference, uh, uh, Casey. Come on down. Mike, as long as we're doing, uh, as long as we are, are doing as being athletes and entertainers, the idea we won't build any more black Wall Street coming to North Carolina, even Florida. And we'll have to, that's the truth. Um, uh, as, long, as long as you're doing that and you, you're worried about that, uh, you're not, you're not, you're not going to be building anything. Uh, because they got you entertained with, with that, um, you know. You know, <laughs> there's just so much I can say about that that, that thing. Uh, Casey Motley, I see it every day when the trade schools left from the inner city, blacks couldn't find a technical school, school to go to. In Chicago, we are making a huge push to get more black men and women involved. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me know if y'all doing a school or something up there. Um, I'll, I'll be more than glad to participate and help in any way possible. We got to get more people into the uh, trade schools. Um, that's the other thing too. Uh, the universities and stuff like that. Universities. Uh, it ain't for like four or five degrees. It's worth going to right now. In the university. If you're not going to be a CPA, engineer, nursing, um, medical. Uh, I don't even know if it's worth it uh, to go to the university anymore. To be honest with you. All right. Uh, so it's now uh, nine twelve. I want to thank everybody uh, for actually uh, for joining us. Uh, we gotta we gotta make a change. Like I say, uh, uh, we 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 we've done enough with this uh, uh, with this uh, entertainment stuff. Um, nothing wrong with the entertainment, uh, but we, we got to start building something. Uh, we have all these uh, athletes, and we don't we don't even have uh, we don't have any uh, African American owned leagues. We don't have any. They don't even own a gym where the, uh, they can go practice in. That that's the thing that make me that I think crazy. You have uh, all these people who. Um, to uh, play all this basketball stuff, they don't even have, they don't even have a gym. They gotta go they gotta go over to UCLA and play. They got they don't even come together and build them a gym to play, to play in. Um, they don't even build a football stadium for, uh, for themselves or for the people in their community to go uh, to go play in. Um, and they and so it, uh, athletes ain't, ain't helped us one bit to be honest with you. Um, athletes ain't, they have not helped us uh, one bit. Um, it actually uh, uh, allowed us to, to go to sleep and actually dream and wish that we would we, we, we turn on the TV and we can we get we get more uh, we get more uh, satisfaction out of watching them out there living their lives and us going out here trying to build our own lives. Um, that that's the sad part. So once again, I want um, I want to thank everybody for uh, for joining in and um, Casey Martin. Appreciate you, Mike. Just found the channel by accident. Uh, it's it's the decadent veil. Uh, Black celebrities make us think uh, we made it, but as far uh, but we are as far behind uh, MJ, LeBron, and Jay Z. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I, I see that. Yeah, I, I see you you're doing a lot with uh, with Tone Talks and Yvette Carnell. Um, yeah, um, I, I, I we do need reparations. Um, I, I agree with that. But I think also with uh, sometimes with tone talk and event, um, sometimes they they not they not as receptive uh, uh, they don't receive uh, 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 solutions as, as, as that well. Um, they're they're at the point they don't think we can do anything. Um, I'm on the opposite end. I think we can uh, we can get ourselves back up to get powerful enough to make a move but as long as you uh, as long as you begging as long as we're uh, uh, begging and um, um, uh, begging and pleading somebody to do right by us uh, they nobody gonna do right by you they just gonna keep ignoring you 
the way the way that you uh, we are. Um, but once you get to a point where you don't need them, because um, what happened if, if we like for instance, um, I told you I was um trying to talk to the state representative, U.S. Rep representative here, and um, I'm telling him this is what we want, and what he said, well, uh, can you find something with with green energy in there? I want to go down with some green energy. But if you start looking at green energy, we might can have some money for you. Ain't that we got no money, we might have money for you. So what they do, they're saying you down a rabbit hole. They take you off the trail of what you're trying to do and the fact that think that you're gonna go get some you're gonna get some money on the green energy thing. And then the next thing you know, they have you carrying their water. They done gave you we wanna talk green energy. So that's what you talk about. They ain't gonna help African Americans one bit because most of us can't afford to put no uh uh solar panels on our house. Um, you know, that's not our concern. Uh, green energy. You ask any African American, what's your major concern right now? Green energy? No, I can't pay my light. <laughs> Nobody cares about no green energy, but they'll run you down that rabbit hole. Uh, so, but the fact that I can tell him, nah, I, 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 that's not what I need. And, uh, I don't need your money. So <laughs> we're going to keep moving. And, uh, and because you, you build up the people behind you that have their, their own, um, economics and stuff that they don't need the government grants and government money then uh you get to a point where now they have to actually start to sit back and look at you especially when you start popping up in uh in places and doing stuff and moving and you get struck uh then they uh then they have to actually then start to take notice and and uh, and, 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 and and start making some concession but as long as you need them for to, to, to pay your bills and to feed your family and stuff, you're going to be in trouble. Uh, the person who I have to go will make all the rules. Okay. Yeah, uh, we've got a long way to go, but we got to start now. Yep. Mike, just like Chinatown, we need African towns all across the country. All right. Yep. We have enough entertainers. Yep. All right. Once again, thank you all for watching. And I will be back on Thursday. Be on the lookout uh, for the actual uh, class, uh, the, the, um, the class boot camp hands-on and the uh, commercial laundry class. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. All right. Okay, before I go, uh, begging, yes. But reparation is not begging. It is a debt owed by the U.S. government. Um, uh to us jews don't um didn't beg and either neither did the japanese but yes we have to do it uh for us we can do it. yeah it's not it's not begging they owe they owe it to us uh but they want to call uh they uh they, they they're refusing to pay and us just telling them um please pay me that that begins to be like begging if somebody, if you, uh, uh, the reason they, 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 uh, that they came out with the, to pay the Japanese, they didn't want, they didn't, um, Japanese to prove that they'll fight, they'll fight to the death, um, you know, if, if, for what they believed in. Um, so they, they went from call. That's, that's why they done that. Um, same thing, the Jews, when the Jews got from up under Hitler for, um, for uh, long enough to catch their breath, what did they do? They didn't say, uh, uh, "Can we all just get along?" They, they went. They went and sharpened up some knives and went back looking for uh, for those Nazis. Everybody that was that put them in concentration camps or done anything, and they hunted them. And they don't care. If they they try to run down to Brazil or wherever. You know, uh, they, they they hunted them down all across the world and made them pay for. It. And they their thing is never again. Uh, their their thing is, uh, hey, we got nuclear bombs. We'll take everybody out if we all get us in that situation. Um, as far as us, we have yet to actually stand up and actually demand and, and, and do anything for ourselves. Um, we uh, even even now, you know, we, we don't. Ah, uh, I can go too much in it. <laughs> okay, I'll talk to you all later. See you. Uh, see you all on Thursday. Bye bye.